Hey guys, welcome back. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something that's super important to me, super personal to me, and I wanted to help some of you first-time moms out, and I wanted to talk to you about breastfeeding. Before I start this video, I do want to say that I am in no way a professional. I am not a licensed medical personnel. I don't have a license to tell you what to take, what not to take. These are just my own personal opinions, my own personal experience that I wanted to share with you. Before you take anything, before you start anything, definitely talk to your doctor doctor, a lactation consultant, an actual medical person that can give you advice for you and your baby because everyone is different, everybody is different, every baby is different. So before you try anything that I'm telling you here, definitely talk to your doctor about it to get the okay in order for you to use anything. So my journey with breastfeeding was super hard. It was a lesson well learned of all the things that I did wrong, the things I did right. It was definitely a journey to say the least. And I wanted to share with you some little tips, some little tricks that really helped me breastfeed up until this point, 10 months, about to be 11 months into breastfeeding. I never supplemented with formula. He's never had any formula. He has only breastfed ever. So I wanted to share with you how I was able to do this but before we do that let me introduce myself my name's kelly i'm a 24 year old mom of a little baby boy nathan he's about to be 11 months breastfeeding is a super important topic to me because there's a lot of things that people don't know about breastfeeding a lot of things that make people give up during breastfeeding and i get it it's super hard you have to really want to breastfeed it's such a hard topic because you have to dedicate so much time to it and i just wanted to give you a little help with it just some things that really helped me breastfeed for this long so I'm gonna talk about four different things the first thing is going to be how I helped my milk supply come in second is going to be how to increase your milk supply when you're going through a regulation third thing is how to maintain your milk supply the fourth is how to build a milk storage and the fifth is how your mood actually affects your milk supply so let's start with the first thing which is how to help your milk come in so your milk doesn't come in right when you give birth it takes a couple days and something that i did that helped me and that also helped my cousin who was a mom before me was drink malta with condensed milk now this is super unhealthy this is super sugary this is like the worst thing probably to drink because it has so many calories in it but it really helped the both of us our milk supply come in i drank it one day and then the next day my milk supply come in i don't know if that's what it was that really gave my milk the nudge to finally come in but since it worked for me and since it worked for my cousin i just wanted to give you a little advice a little latin secret so malta with condensed milk you mix in a little bit of condensed milk with the malta it's delicious but it is probably the worst thing you can drink especially if you do want to lose that baby weight you don't have to drink it your whole postpartum it's just those first couple of weeks to really help your milk come in the next thing i want to talk about is how to increase your supply when you're going through a regulation so what happens is at around three months your body regulates how much milk is coming out of your breasts it's not like before when your milk supply first came in and there was just an endless supply your baby just latched and there was milk already ready for them to drink at about three months your body only produces milk when your baby latches and so a lot of mom thinks at that point that they're going through a dry spell or that their baby doesn't want to breastfeed anymore and what's actually happening is your body is making sure that you don't overproduce and waste all that liquid gold because every little drop is super important so what i did to help increase my supply when i went through that regulation the first thing was pump after every nursing session it was super tiring, it was a lot, but really that extra pumping after Nathan would nurse, I feel was what really helped my body kind of like wake up and it was like telling it, hey, I need a little more from you, can you please keep producing more milk? So after every nursing session, I would pump for about 20 minutes and I feel like that really helped increase my supply. The other thing that I did was just constantly latching Nathan onto the breast. Anytime he was whining, crying, anytime I felt like he was just a little fussy, I would just put him on the breast. If he was crying, on the breast. When he woke up, on the breast. He was just constantly nursing. He was always on me. It was just a way for the body kind of like to let it know, hey, keep 
keep producing more milk, come on, we need some more, keep it going. And then another thing that helped, and I know a lot of people can't eat, was eat peanut butter. I know some people have nut allergies, but for me, peanut butter was essential to help increase my supply. I don't know what it was about it. Every time I had peanut butter, the next day I would wake up super engorged, just full of milk. So peanut butter was definitely something that helped increase my supply. Another alternative, if you can't have peanut butter, that also helped me was oats. So I would eat oatmeal, oat cookies. I would make energy balls. I would get oat milk and I would put it in anything that I would eat. Anything that I could put milk in, I would just substitute it with oat milk. So oats was a super, super huge thing to really help increase my supply. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to maintain your milk supply. So this is a huge thing because you have to keep giving your body nutrients in order to keep that milk supply coming in. You really need to help your body because it's working full time to help you produce that milk. So what I did to help maintain my milk supply was keep taking my prenatal. So my doctor was the one that told me this. He was the one that really told me to keep taking my prenatals and it really helps your body just keep working and keep giving all those nutrients that the baby needs. And the other thing I did was drink a ton of water every time you nurse, every time you breastfeed, there is just constant fluids coming out of your body. So your body can get a little dehydrated. So I would just drink water. And sometimes when I couldn't drink water, I couldn't just get myself to drink water. Electrolyte drinks are also great. Another huge thing is just to eat regularly. Have breakfast, have a snack, then have lunch, then have another snack, then have dinner, then have a little healthy after dinner dessert snack. You also feel like you constantly have to eat because your body just is hungry all the time. So definitely eating regularly is a huge part in helping maintain your milk supply. Another thing we're gonna talk about is how to build a little milk storage. So I wasn't like a crazy person with milk storage. I don't have like a million bajillion bags of milk in my freezer, I wish I did. But you can build just a little milk supply in case you ever need it, in case baby ever gets sick. And what really helped me build this stash was using the haka. So the haka is this silicone suction cup that you put on the other breast, opposite of the breast that the baby is nursing on. And the haka would just collect all of the little liquid gold that comes out of there. So that really helped me build my storage. Another thing is pumping. Like I said before, to help maintain your milk supply, a good way to do so is to pump. And you can store that pumped milk. What I used to store the milk bags was I had a little system. So I had, it was like a Medela, these little bottles. And what I would do is I would pump or I would get the haka and then I would put the milk in those little bottles. I would put it in the fridge and after about a couple hours then I would take them out and I would use the milk bags and I would just pour it in the milk bags and put it straight into the freezer. That's how I had my milk storage. That's how I build my milk storage. It's great to have in case I ever need it. And the last thing I want to talk about is how your mood affects your milk supply. So I didn't know this but your mood really does affect how much milk you produce. So stress is a huge, huge factor in diminishing and hindering your milk supply. So if you feel like breastfeeding is stressing you out, if you feel like it's affecting your mental health, if you feel like you just are forcing yourself to nurse and to breastfeed, just stop. You should never breastfeed because you feel like you have to, because you feel like you're forced to. Your mental health is so, so important, especially in those first couple of months postpartum. Don't force yourself to breastfeed. You have to want to breastfeed. So stress, anger, anxiety, all of that stuff really does affect your milk supply. What is important is your mental health, your baby. It's not worth your own health to do something that you just don't want to do. Breastfeeding is a super long journey it's super hard it, it takes a lot of dedication it takes a lot of passion it takes a lot of you wanting to breastfeed and what's important is that you're okay and you can take care of baby i really hope you guys enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up if you did i hope that they help you continue your breastfeeding journey i hope it really helps you enjoy your breastfeeding journey don't forget to subscribe hit that notification button so you know when i post next and i'll see you guys in the next one bye